We heard to get the best views of St. Petersburg, you need to come to the top of St. Isaac Cathedral. When you walk in, it's meant to look like an old, typical Soviet apartment. I didn't know what to expect in Russia, but it, it's so exciting that we're back in Europe. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Russia. <laughs> we are so excited. We're currently in St. Petersburg, and we're going to be taking you guys around for the next two days. But this is kind of like our first time out in the city. We've come to the center, and this place reminds us a lot of Venice and Amsterdam. There are all these canals running all through the city. The buildings are so colorful. But our morning didn't start here on the canals. It actually started with us attempting to use the metro systems here in Russia. We've heard that Russia has some of the best metro stations in the world. And this station here in St. Petersburg is actually the deepest metro station here in Russia. And we're currently going more than 80 meters down under the ground. This is like the longest escalator ever. And we're still going deeper and deeper. So this is actually super affordable to use the metro system here in Russia for about 45 rubles, so like less than a buck. You just jump on and then you can go as far as you want and then you, you just hop back off and then that's the end of your ticket. So it's not like the London underground where you pay per zone. You just pay, ride, jump out. Oh, oh my so gosh, yeah, it was like a big pot of coffee. And then she just poured it in, like straight away made. Breakfast is served. Ooh, it's warm. Wow, it's great. <laughs> So we just went and had some breakfast at a cafe that does donuts from the Soviet era. So this is a very traditional style of, I don't know, run and gun breakfast where you can grab your coffee that was just served out of a massive pot, <laughs> yeah. nice cheap donuts. And to be honest, they're really good. They're actually not too bad. And the coffee was not too it bad. It's so sweet though. They put so much sugar in it. But what's really cool as well is it's so authentic that back in the day, napkins and toilet paper were really scarce. So they even serve, like they don't have napkins there, they're just pieces of paper just like they would have done back during the Soviet times. Which I thought was really interesting, but the donuts, very greasy. It was kind of cool, it felt like we just stepped back in time mm. for a few moments. Mystery, the only school The flowers talk and trees can walk around Sometimes It literally looks like a gingerbread church. like a gingerbread house that's been turned into a church. It is so colourful. I'm actually really excited to see what it looks like inside if this is how beautiful it looks outside. So what makes this museum so unique is that the walls are covered in 7,000 square metres of mosaic. So this church was actually built in memoriam by Alexander III for his father, Alexander II, and unfortunately this is where his father was assassinated. Hence the unfortunate name of the church, Saviour on the Spilt Blood. But wow, just coming inside here, you just can't believe how beautiful it is. Ready to walk up a lot of steps? How many steps? I think it's probably over 200. Oh. <laughs> so has he got to walk with that donut? <laughs> hey, if you walk them at two steps a time, it's only a hundred steps. <laughs> to get the best views of St. Petersburg you need to come to the top of St. Isaac Cathedral and people are right you can see so far out over here and really see how beautiful this city is something that we've noticed about St. Petersburg since the moment we arrived is the architecture here 
is like nothing else. Look at the buildings that we are surrounded <laughs> to right now. There's like a gigantic yellow theater to my right, a beautiful gingerbread pink building to my left. This is so amazing. And these are apartment blocks. Imagine living in that building. Also, when this was first built, they said this was a hideous, ugly building. <laughs> I, what? I know. <laughs> it's amazing here. It's very European. Like, I didn't know what to expect in Russia, but it, it's so exciting that we're back in Europe. And, and one thing I wasn't expecting is Russia to be so colorful. Every single building is painted a different color. Like, it look really at this. It like brightens it up. It's like That's a milkshake. Day. Milkshake colors behind you at the moment. <laughs> so we are now going to be spending the afternoon exploring the Winter Palace. So this is actually where the royal family lived during the winter. And it is now home to one of the largest and most famous museums in the world, the Hermitage Museum. So some people regard this as one of the top five museums in the world. It's pretty much five buildings that are connected to each other. It is humongous. There's works from Leonardo, Raffaella here, and we've already got lost numerous times. Even though we have a map, it's just huge. So to put into perspective how many pieces of artwork is here, they say if you spend one minute looking at every piece in the entire gallery, it will take you 11 years. We literally spent over three hours in the museum and we still didn't see everything. This place is huge, but we've actually come to the front because the front is just as beautiful as the inside. Morning guys, it is the next day. So yesterday we actually ended our time checking out the Winter Palace. And so this morning we've driven an hour outside of the city and we have come to the Summer Palace. So this is where the Tsar family, the royal family lived during the summertime. And it is probably even more grand than the Winter Palace. The facade, when you first walk in, is 300 meters long. And when they built it, they made it so the staircase to enter is on the other side to make the guests walk all the way to take in, I guess, the opulence. Instead of wallpaper, they've filled the walls with the different collections of artwork and paintings. And just have a look at all these different individual pieces of work. There's seriously so much wealth here, and this palace is so grand. I mean, literally, you just closed my eyes and told me that we were in a chateau in France or in Versailles. Probably would believe you. I mean, it is just so much wealth in these palaces. So we've just come back into the city and we're currently walking down Nevsky Prospect, which is like the main road here in St. Petersburg. And we thought, we've been here for a few days, we want to try some typical Russian food. And we found a spot after doing some Googling. And it's not just typical Russian food, it's like typical Soviet food. And what's really cool is that the place, when you walk in, it's meant to look like an old typical Soviet apartment. It really does feel like we've just walked into someone's house. It's really cool the way the restaurant is laid out because you actually have to walk through the house and we're currently kind of sitting in our own little area and we've ordered some food and I'm very excited to try it. The first thing we got is kind of like this Russian pie. We got two types. We got a fish one and then we got a cabbage and egg. And this is what they look like. They're kind of like little, more like little pastries. And like we weren't of, too sure what they were going to look like. It's kind of come up like starters as well. So yeah. our main meal hasn't arrived yet. But. And it looks super homemade. I grabbed the fish one. Mmm. I didn't hear a crunch. Did you just like slice right through that? Mmm. It's like a soft pie. It kind of tastes like tuna inside. They're really good. They definitely taste homemade. All right, these have been suggested by you guys. Varaniki, it's kind of like a dumpling. And we got a mushroom and potato one. And then this one is cherry, a cherry dumpling. I'm and this was this one, you can try the cherry. You can let us know what you think. Oh I yeah. I did not know they ate dumplings here. Mm. 
It kind of tastes like, like a stuffed pasta. You have to try the cherry. I'm very interested in that. Also, this wasn't like served with dessert. This is just out with the mains as well. Mm -hmm. hmm. Cherry dumpling? Mm. Is it good? What? Okay, I'm gonna try it now. I was nervous. I mean, that's a dessert. But Is wow, it? That's so good. I'm gonna try this. Mmm. Tastes like a cherry pie, mm. but inside a dumpling. Wow. And it's ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> we couldn't say no to dessert, and I've actually never tried like a Russian dessert before. This one is called Napoleon cake. Never tried it. And also, Stephen got Ukrainian cottage cheese pancakes. Oh, it's like a lot of layers. It's like a pastry. Mmm. Oh wow, that's so good. It's like heaps of pastry and, and um, custard. <laughs> it's like cottage cheese mm -hmm. inside there. Okay, the desserts are the best bit. Wow. It kind of tastes like a um, pancake cheesecake. Because of the sweet cheese in it. Like the cottage cheese? Wow, that's really good. Guys, we've officially eaten too much food. <laughs> Have we though? Oh wow, the food is... This has really good. Oh, that was really good. I have no idea how to pronounce it, so we'll leave a link below if you guys want a place to eat if you come to St. Petersburg. It was cool because there was also a lot of locals eating there. Yeah. So, I hope... Hopefully it was like a good local experience and there were so many options on the menu so you could try a bunch of different Russian foods. We've noticed that there are a bunch of boats that float along the canal so we're actually going to spend the afternoon on one of these boats and exploring some of the city. Wild and deep, and I am lost at sea. I couldn't count how many wishes that I've thrown to the stars. Guys, that was super nice. It goes for about an hour. They do speak Russian the entire time, so we didn't really get what she was saying. But the buildings are so beautiful, and that is like a really nice way to see the city. So that pretty much ends our time here in St. Petersburg. Loved it. It's such a beautiful city. Had some good food, but the Russian adventures are just beginning. We've got a few more stops before we leave. So if you are new around here, hit subscribe, give the video a thumbs up because we have some fun videos coming your way. And we are currently staying in a little town called Novogard. All right, this looks really weird, but um, I'm about to whip Stephen with the things you do in Russia. <laughs> Vodka. Yeah. That's good. That's good. <laughs>